Cherish Laura, and if you are new, welcome. And if you are new, I have to introduce you to one of my best friends, Mimi. Hey guys, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So she's actually here because we're gonna learn how to make some festive drinks, which is right up our alley on friendship because like, this is like how we met. Sure does. <laughs> she was a bartender at the restaurant that I worked at and homegirl since then has been making all my drinks. She knows I like them sweet and she knows what I can take and what I can't take. <laughs> she cannot have bourbon. Can't have it. But that's okay, because we're still gonna have a drink for the bourbon drinkers out there. And for people who are not a fan of the sweet drinks. Yeah. We have a little bit of everything. We don't um, discriminate. All themed around Halloween. Some little ooky spooky um, fall flavors. I'm excited to show you guys. I still love to bartend. I love to cook. I love to make drinks. I love to entertain. So bartending kind of combines all of that. And it does. I also love to drink. So she loves to drink. <laughs> so it really works out well for me because I love to drink, but what I don't want is a gross drink. So if I'm gonna drink, it's gonna be something yummy. Put all of this to the test. Like I don't know what to do, but she's all gonna of this, all of this, and then some. We have a few other ingredients. Um, we'll see them as we get to them, and we will put the recipes what in the in the in description? the description. Yeah, I'll have yeah. everything in the description, even the alcohol that we're using, the ingredients. Um, apples, oranges, <laughs> everything will be listed down below. And if I can, I'll list the wine glasses, the shakers as well. So let's get to it. Let's have some drinks. What drink we have, we're gonna call it our witch's brew. So Mimi's gonna teach us how to make this. All righty, yay. Um, okay, so we are using some Empress gin today, which is really cool because first of all, it's just a great gin. It's um, really smooth, has good flavors, good in mixed drinks but it's also like this bluish purple color, which is just majestic. So this drink is gonna be kind of a play on a gin and ginger. Um, it's you know not normally a very fancy drink. It's something you can just get at any bar, but we have made a spiced orange syrup today, um, which is here. It is equal parts sugar and water, one cup of each, um, the peel of half of an orange, two cinnamon sticks, and then a teaspoon each of whole cloves and whole nutmeg, simmered for maybe five minutes um, until it's all dissolved and delicious. And yeah, it comes out very pretty, which I love. Um, okay, and it smells so good. It smells so good. Yeah, I will drink it. And then we took the orange um, for the garnish. We took the orange peels out of it because they are essentially candied now. So we're gonna throw one of those spiced orange peels on top, which is a delicious treat. I've also just been eating them, so congrats to me. What we're yeah, gonna no. do is take the skull and pour the ice in here since it's kind of hard to scoop. So we don't want to shake. We don't want to shake the ginger beer because it's carbonated and it will explode. And it will also uh, make all the carbonation go out, which is like gross. No one wants a flat drink. So we are going to shake the gin and the syrup together with ice, um, and then pop that into a rocks glass, and then pour the ginger beer on top. Okay. So one and a half ounces of this Empress gin. Now, did you have trouble finding this? Yes, I had to go. You need to go to a fancy liquor store to get this one. So this is not just like your corner liquor store. You need to go to one that you know is like fully stocked because they're the ones who's gonna have this gin. Yeah, they probably have a location thingy on their website too. Um, we're gonna do half an ounce of this syrup. It's okay if you get some of the spices and stuff in there because I'm gonna double strain it. Um, if you're not gonna double strain it, then like maybe try not to get the cloves in that because no one wants to drink that. Um, so both of those over ice, one and a half gin, half an ounce of syrup. Give it a good little shake. It's gonna be over ice too, so it doesn't have to be like too crazy. Um, we're using these plastic, um, like giant ice cubes, which are nice because they don't melt and water your drink down. Um, and then we will take our shaken gin and syrup. We have the top strainer, and then we have the baby strainer to catch the um, any extra of the like cloves or anything that come out, which actually it looks like the main strainer did a pretty good job. And like right now it's super blue. It's Yeah, it's like blue, which is weird. I don't know. This is what it looks like here. And then we're just gonna do maybe half a can of this ginger beer. It really depends on your preference um, and also how big your glass is. So anywhere from maybe two to three ounces would be pretty good. Okay, there you go. Now it's starting to change colors. Yeah. And then we will just, let's see. I'm trying to get a good one. Honestly, do better than I did on these. Um, use a peeler and try to get nice long pieces. It'll look better in the long run. I don't have a peeler. Yeah, so we just kind of pop that on top. Looks like this. I don't know how to get it up there without, oh, it fell in, that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that. oh, and then dry ice. Dry ice. You can I talk have... about that. I don't know how it works. <laughs> you gotta be careful with the dry ice. So we put it in there for effect. You can serve it to your guests, 
I've read and I watch YouTube videos saying that you have to make sure that it dissolves first before they're able to drink it because you don't want it to burn the throat. So you want to have tongs, you want to wear gloves, but I've already broken up into cubes. Little piece. I got mine at Publix and so you have to ask your cashier for dry ice because they have to go get it. And you take a little cube. I'm doing a bigger piece for the video's sake. Ooh. And look at it. How pretty. Oh. It's, that's all you need. You need this and just take a picture. You're good. <laughs> yeah, do it for the gram and then let do it, it let it dissipate gram. before you drink it so you don't hurt yourself. I'm gonna test like the, the tester. And that's good. No, I'm not a gin person at all, but the spice is nice and it's, it's a fun drink. Like I can sip this all night. Yeah. Like if I was at a party, this is like a good sipper. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a huge gin drinker either, and I think people to gravitate towards gin and tonic, but I really like the kind of fall vibes of the ginger and like the spiced orange syrup to kind of, um, you know, make it a little bit more seasonally appropriate. The thing that's cool about this drink is if you don't tell your guests what it is, they will honestly almost never guess it because of the color of it. Um, and then of course you have the dry ice component, and then it's like orange spice syrup. You just would probably never guess it in a million years. So it's kind of like um, a drink in costume, if you will. It's incognito, which is fun. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Drink in costume, I like that. Okay, drink number two. We're gonna call this our Dracula kiss, and you'll see why. Come on, Mimi, tell us what we got. All right, so this is for all my bourbon fans out there. Not really me, but some people love bourbon, and this is actually a great bourbon mixed drink, um, even if you're not a huge bourbon fan. So we are using Bullet Rye. I like rye whiskey for mixed cocktails. Um, to me, it's a, it has a little bit sweeter of an aftertaste. Um, it's not super sweet, it just is a little bit smoother in cocktails than your standard whiskey. So, whiskey, uh, Bullet Rye here, this is my favorite brand. I'm using two ounces of this Bullet Rye. And this one's gonna be strained into a martini glass with no ice, so it will be a fun. We want it to be, you know, when you're, when you have something in a martini glass, I think people expect it to be a little bit stronger. So that's what we're going with here. All right, next, pomegranate juice. So this is what's gonna give it the color. It gives a nice tartness, still a little bit sweet, but it's a nice balance with the rye. Um, so we are going to do two ounces of pomegranate juice as well. This is what helps me drink it. <laughs> It kind of helps mellow out the kick because it's so tart. Bourbon is not it. Not for me. Um, <laughs> and we're adding a little bit of sweetness with a honey syrup. Um, so you can't really shake honey into drinks as it is. It'll just kind of stick to the bottom of the shaker. So if you want a drink to have a little bit of that sweetness from honey, um, you can melt equal parts honey and water on the stove. Um, again, for like honestly three or four minutes, just until it's melted and mixed. It's not cooking or anything. We're just trying to get it chemically found. Um, so this is half an ounce of the honey syrup that I made. And we're gonna use um, some bitters. So this just adds kind of a nice depth of flavor, a little bit. I think what it tastes like. Bitters is just very, um, it almost has like the cinnamony, nutmeggy like mm, type. Yes. It's aromatic it says. So we'll go with that. We're gonna add about three dashes of that. I like a lot of bitters because I'm a psychopath. Um, okay. Cool. So what we want to do now is shake this with ice and then strain it. And see our little skeleton here. So are you like filling it all the way up with ice? Um, oh, okay. You just want to fill it a, like higher than the drink itself. So you don't want it to like, you want the ice to be at least equal to the drink, if not more. Um, this is like the pellet ice from Sonic. It is good to serve drinks. It's not the best for shaking drinks because it breaks down a lot faster and can make things a little bit watery, which is why I'm working very quickly. Um, but yeah, really anyway, any ice works. But if you, you know, have strong feelings about ice, pop them below. Maybe we'll do a, <laughs> maybe we'll do a video ice on shake. ice. Um, so yeah, we want this to look pretty. So we're gonna take our martini glass and we have simple syrup on a plate here. And then on our other plate, we have, okay, yeah. So we're just going to just really circle it with a simple syrup here. And then you're gonna lift that one. We have like this um, sugar, these like sugar sprinkles, like the glittery kind, but this is like a silvery white. This would also be really cool with a black, um, like a black sand sugar type situation. I think that would look really nice. But yeah, we just wanted to, you know, make it a little bit more festive, especially if this is for a party or something like that. Since this is not going to be served on ice, we want to give it a lot of shakes. Like, you want it to be very cold, so. Okay. Shake, shake, shake. That was 30, and this is freezing. My hand is freezing. Wow. Right now. 
Um, 30 shakes is normally pretty good. It's got like a little froth on top, which is nice. That means it's real good in there. So when you see the froth, you know that you're good. Yeah. You see, you can sort of see it. And depending on the kind of ice you have, I don't think it happens with pellet ice, but if you have, um, like the ice they have at most restaurants, it comes in like a standard soft drink. If you shake that ice really good, sometimes you can get like a thin sheet of like ice crystals on top of your drink, which is a very fun thing to do for me. Um, so just a, just a hot tip there. We are gonna pop some pomegranate seeds down into the bottom, which make it look kind of spooky. It kind of makes me think of this is kind of so gross. It kind of makes me think of like coagulated blood. No, I <laughs> mean- It's like a drag, it's like a yeah. Halloween drink, so. That is right. our Dracula's kiss. Cheers. Oh, That's good. That's good. Real good. Awesome. You gotta be careful with this bourbon. Yes, you do. This will get you. So this is a caramel apple spritz, um, inspired by my favorite Halloween candy, which is this caramel apple pops. I have a bag of them at my house. I eat one every day. TK's like, you have to see a dentist. No, I just ate the whole bag. <laughs> day so yeah i love them they're seasonal <laughs> i like binge on them during october and then pretend it never happens they're so good um so here i have my shaker filled about three quarters of the way with ice um and we are going to be using caramel vodka for this Miranoff makes caramel vodka and you can get it in small bottles which is nice if you're not um you know having a big group you can just have a few by yourself after work whatever um so we're gonna use one and a half ounces of caramel vodka you could also probably use vanilla. You can also probably use plain if you can't find caramel. Um, any of those flavors that like you feel like you could dump in a Starbucks drink would honestly work. Actually, that's not true. Chocolate would never work in this, so don't do that. <laughs> um, and then we have apple cider. Um, if you can't find apple cider, Simply, um, the brand Simply Orange makes a really good Simply Apple Juice that is very cider-esque. So if you are one of those people who likes apple cider year round like me, you can try that. Um, so just a little pinch of cinnamon. We're not gonna measure because that feels excessive, but it's just a couple of inches. Um, yeah, we shake. Are you shaking for 30? For this um, no. Okay. Just like a good shake. We're serving it over ice, so it doesn't have to be as cold like from the jump. You just want to try to get that cinnamon powder good and mixed in. All right, so now that our drink's in here, it's shaken, it's ready to go. We are going to prep our glass. This is like one of my favorite parts of this drink. Um, we have here caramel, like ice cream topping, essentially. It's just caramel sauce. Go ahead and get a good spin in that. And then we again have this gold kind of oh, glitter. glitter sprinkles. And this is fun because the caramel is pretty thick, so it kind of starts to drip down the side and it looks really fancy and decadent which I, and look how pretty it has like a sparkle i just love it okay so now that we have our glass prepped we'll actually go ahead we're gonna dump in the drink ice and all we are then gonna add some more ice so especially when you're using these huge wine glasses you do not want to skimp on the ice like nothing is sadder than just a watery drink um, I, the size is kind of in chunks. I'm going to use my fingers because this is my drink. Um, I would recommend not using your fingers if you're serving this to people. And this is actually a drink that the pellet ice is pretty good for. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are Aperol Spritz fans. It's like my favorite drink. Um, and just the pellet ice just works well with it. Last, we're going to top with Prosecco. This is La Marca. You could really use any sparkling wine. I wouldn't use anything too sweet. Um, because this drink is already a little on the sweet side with the caramel vodka and apple cider. So I would use a drier champagne or sparkling wine. And real quick before we pour that in, we're gonna give this a squeeze of lemon. Cause like I mentioned, it's a little on the sweet side. Okay, this is gonna be about four ounces of Prosecco when it's all said and done. Um, really just depends on the size of your glass, but for the ratios of this drink, one and a half vodka, one and a half cider, four Prosecco. Squeeze a lemon and a pinch of cinnamon and you are good to go. So we, I, any drink that has this much ice, I feel like you have to have a straw. When I'm drinking, I'm on a mission, which is to drink the drink as fast as possible. Um, that Get sounds bad. But um, a straw really helps, especially when there's ice, you don't want brain freeze. And then I like to just do an apple slice and a cinnamon stick. We try to nice turn it around pretty. without messing it up. Ooh, yes, delicious. Look at the aesthetic on that. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's so good. And like, look how this, uh, the, um, like the drip, the caramel, I'm doing the YouTuber thing, the caramel drip. I think it's just so pretty. So yeah, this is our favorite. It's so pretty, tastes it's so good. good. Uh. And it's like champagne and vodka. Mm -hmm. Yum. <laughs> so, it's yeah. a fun time. So thank y'all so much for watching. Mimi, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. This is a real treat. Make sure you like this video, especially if you want her to come back for Christmas. 
And if you have any fun drink ideas or anything you want to see, let me know. Ah, let's cheers. Cheers. Yay. Yay. Thank y'all. See you later.